Joy and Re, I feel like for all intents and purposes, she might as well be a liberal uh, white woman. Uh, like, right? Because <laughs> of the way, where her attitude that she be having, you, you she kind of acts that way, you know. But you know, Africans and American black people don't got the best relationship as it is. So let's check out what she had to say. This whole rant is wild. Tell me who the nominee is going to be. Oh, Let no. me know when you guys are finished fighting amongst yourselves who I got to vote for in November to keep Hitler out the White House. That's all I want to know. Who I got to vote for to keep Hitler out the White House. Y'all do your thing. Play in traffic all you want in front of these Republicans, acting a fool in front of these people instead of privately declaring your stuff. But don't text me no more because I'm not taking no more of these texts. Just let me know when you guys are finished figuring it out, Democrats, because I know y'all the freak out people. Go ahead and freak out. Have your conversation. And then let me know who I got to vote for to keep Hitler out the White House. That's it. I'm done. Oh, and by the way, not done, if by it's the way. Biden in a coma, I'm going to vote for Biden in a coma. I don't even really particularly like the guy. I, a lot of his policy, don't like him. He's not Donald Trump, right? First of all, I got to say, I was kind of surprised that she actually said that she didn't like him. Nor like, cause every other black person, I ain't gonna lie, has been putting on this "woe is me." We love him so much; he's been so great for us. And she actually came out and said she don't even like the guy. So I'm kind of surprised by that. So Joy and Reed is despicable because she gives me the impression that she doesn't believe what she says. She says it for a paycheck. You want to know who the um, the only person who mentioned Gaza? Well, obviously I spoiled it. The only person who mentioned Gaza during debate night was her. On MSNBC, on MSNBC mm -hmm. panel. So the, the, the that would make Joy Ann Reed actually despicable because <laughs> it'd be yeah. different if you actually like hardcore. If you grew up an institutionalist, like like a Joe Scarborough, a Joe Scarborough, for example, a Joe mm -hmm. Manchin, his dad was a was a was in a government. So doesn't it make sense that they will be institutionalists too because they yeah. in their heart and heart believe in it. They they benefit from it. But people like Joy Ann Reed, she knows the criticism of the crime bill. Yeah, she understands the empire. Like, and you can't tell me she does not. The people like hey, Nick, Nick, Nick you're just the same Nick person. Hard. He's the same person that did not want Hillary Clinton to run, and actually, at the very beginning, was going yeah. to root for Bernie Sanders. Now, I think I mentioned on your show before. People don't know, but a little birdie from inside Bernie Sanders' campaign told me the reason why she switched up so hard and was almost like irrationally angry with this man to the point of even lying was because whenever a black man from Bernie's campaign wanted to talk about black policies that Bernie was, was that Bernie was pushing Bernie's team I'm not going to say any names but it was Jeff Weaver got in contact with uh with Joanne Reed and with this particular person and told him, no you're not going on didn't give him a reason so so Joanne Reed took that as you guys are some racist pieces of shit and y'all really only have these black people on your campaign to tokenize them uh and to say you have them there because at this point they didn't let uh Nina go on and they didn't let this particular uh, individual go on either so she flipped up and switched up knowing how horrible Hillary Clinton was. And this actually footage of her criticizing Hillary Clinton before this happened. So you're absolutely right. This is, yeah. she knows better and chooses to be a tool of the, of the establishment. Yeah, and, I, and I want, I'll let you finish the video, but be, this is why I'm actually harder on them because I'm actually, I talk a lot of shit, but I actually give a lot of grace to people who are victims of propaganda. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The people who were tricked, I give grace to those people, despite all the shit I talk. It's the people who know better, the media signs, the Joy and Reeves, but they make a calculation to sell out. They 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 make the ball. Edge. Yeah, I actually view those people as the worst because they stand on no principle. Well, at least the hard right Republican conservative, they standing on something. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you know, there's like a human factor where I'm like, well, at least you're not. No, these people are are chameleons who will shift their morals and value based on what make them higher up in higher society, even though there's a voice inside of them. Like, there's a voice inside Joy and Reed right now saying, there's a genocide in Gaza going on, which is why she brings it up on MSNBC. Those people are the worst. But anyway, nigga, yeah. I don't even want to continue. Hopefully that point nah, makes sense. No, nah, you're 100% right, man. You're 100% because because Joy and Reed, surprisingly enough, was actually one of the most outspoken on that particular issue, right? Yeah, That's yeah you will hear a rant from her every once in a while. You're like, Come on, why are you not connecting the dots? <laughs> you <don't hear> <laughs> right? But go exactly. Ahead, go. Let me check this. Yeah, sorry. Hitler, White House. We keeping them out. Keeping Project Twenty Twenty Five out. That's all. Hold on, real quick. Uh, would it like keeping <laughs> Hitler? Like the guy? You don't consider the guy who's actually sending the billions of dollars to neo Nazis, the the Hitler candidate? I'm just just if we're talking about you know definitions of <laughs> and we're drawing uh, metaphors and analogy because <laughs> Trump for all the things he did wrong. 
he definitely didn't give money to the Nazis. That was actually one of his red lines. It's, ironically, one of the red lines that Obama had even drawn before, uh, even though Biden was trying to get his sent there at the time, uh, Trump, Trump didn't send the money to Nazis. And even Obama didn't send money to Nazis. That's a Joe Biden specific thing that we're still dealing with. And so like, it's weird that you can't really throw out the Hitler thing. That's just a really bad analogy to use at this particular juncture when NATO is sabotaging every single peace deal, sending money to the Nazis, uh, 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 ensuring that the Azov Battalion, because they, they were before they were unofficial, they were an unofficial part of the, the Ukrainian government. Then they became an official part of the Ukrainian government. So yeah, man, it's probably not the best analogy to use, Joy, just saying. All I care about, uh, up and down the ballot, from the rooter to the tutor, school board, all the way up to White House and everything in between, governors, members of Congress, I'm just gonna vote all the way down to keep these people out. The Project 2025 thing is the whole Republican Party. At this point, it's not about Biden. It is not about him. It's above me now. There's a best never. Western next door. It is about keeping Donald Trump and his Project 2025 friends out of power. That's it for me, y'all. Y'all let me know what you think. And another Why thing. Why you keep saying that? <laughs> I always got another thing. You She's guys do that. know that in 2020, y'all Democrats had choices of young people. You had a young LGBTQ guy, Mayor Pete. Yeah, you had a yeah. Latino. You had uh, Kamala oh, Harris. Yeah. You had Liz Warren. Yeah. You had all these choices that were all younger than Biden, <laughs> fresher and newer than Biden. And you know who y'all picked to be the president uh, and the nominee? Joe Biden. <laughs> he beat all the young she people. Them so, there. yes, we yeah, have the yeah. on the Democratic side. Way too many of these oldie goldies that don't seem to want to sit down and retire. But when given the choice between the young and fresh and Joe Biden, y'all picked Joe Biden. <laughs> that was what you picked. <laughs> no, so no, no. She's cooking, Nico. I just want to ask her quickly. I want to ask her just real quick. She's cooking here, but she's misleading, right? Because she's leaving out the fact that Obama made the phone call. Hey, <laughs> and it was the, twice. But, but but she is cooking in some way, but I just want to clarify and add some more details there because it wasn't like almost like, oh my God, you guys asked. No, it was a coordinated decision by your boy, Barack Obama. But go ahead, Nico. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I was going to say she cooking, she cooked twice, really. Like, because when we, so you did have those young candidates and you did have the Elizabeth Warrens and you did have the, 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 uh, the Bernie Sanders. You even had Tulsi, who, if you were going to, at that time, with the policies that she was pushing, you could have done whatever you wanted to and replaced her after she beat Trump. Because she would have beaten Trump, given that right now, Trump's base is actually trying to recruit her. They're trying to recruit her. So, like, you had a person that you could have even, you could have easily just replaced. But now, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. I'm going to let her finish cooking, though, because you're right. She is cooking a little bit, but she's doing that shit where she misleads. Picked him in the first place. So just keep that in mind that you've been given options in the past, and this is what you pick. No, let me wrong. Let it just say this. Up and choose to run against him in the primary. So once again, Democrats went out and voted and picked. If you try to undo that choice, like fifty-seven million some odd Democrats voted in these primaries. So what are you going to do? You're going to just tell them, "F off." We're going to pick somebody different. Uh, it's not here. Uh, uh, or uh, <laughs> y y in is that different somehow than what they normally do? They I'm gonna <laughs> oh, you sweet <laughs> summer child, Joy. You sweet summer child. <laughs> now, in in Nico, this is why NATO is actually pissed because NATO is upset because if they actually do this, that means China and Russia will be able to say the United States are not democratic and they are hypocrites. So I, I don't think NATO, I don't think a lot of people in the U.S. allies actually want this as well. But go ahead, Nico. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just, I was just saying that. Um, we, we are, so they keep trying to play this game lately that has been pissing me off where all of a sudden they keep pretending as if you can't switch out a candidate at the convention. I don't know where, wh uh, where yeah. the fuck have they been at the last eight years? Then the last eight years, it's really been like, I don't know, since Henry Wallace, right? Wasn't he the last, like he, they literally, this is a vice president who already won three terms, served with FDR, and they flipped him out at the last minute overnight after he won. He won the, the, he won the delegates. Everything was good. But then they, they flipped them out. They switched them out. So, like, why y'all pretend like y'all don't know what a superdelegate is? Why y'all pretend like y'all these pledged delegates don't flip on a dime at the convention and, and, and that this is such a big deal? It's like they're, they're putting up 
a facade of democracy, Nick, and it's pissing me off. Oh, oh, we go. So the so the voters, the voters don't matter. Since when do they matter to y'all? Specifically the Democrats of all parties at this point. It's insanity. Yeah. Let me let me finish this clip up. Let me finish the clip up because this is this, this is what they this is what they do, man. And you know how I feel. You you out of all people, you know how I feel. Because they play this game, bro. They play this. Oh man, now we we're gonna disrespect the voters. Uh, we're gonna, we, yeah, y'all remember y'all ran out. Y'all literally hired a fucking lawyer to tell us to prove that y'all didn't have to respect the the voters and, and who they chose. Y'all literally argued in court and went to the Supreme Court because of y'all got Bruce Fever who claimed that y'all didn't actually have to do what the voters wanted. So like, I don't know why you playing stupid now. Maybe if you would have read the damn DNC for all lawsuits instead of pretending like it was frivolous, maybe you would have already known the Democratic Party has already reached that conclusion. But hey, whatever. <laughs> Kamala Harris, who was on that ticket too, on those ballots, that's not democracy. <laughs> this choice has been made. And so again, unless he decides to walk away, this mm -hmm. is your choice. It's like when you go to a wedding, you got chicken or fish. You can eat chicken or fish or just be hungry. Or like when I was growing up in my house, it's what mom made for dinner or go to bed. Is it true? You, you don't always get choices you love. You get what mom made for dinner or take your ass to bed. Well, that part, she is accurate. That is literally how the Democrats have always ran their democracies. Their democracies. You get what Democrats made for dinner or you go to bed. That's the problem. Y'all, she's acting like that's not how we got here, Nick. Yeah, you see what she's trying to program people into thinking? That the government is your mama and daddy. These these uh, medical are <laughs> not an accident. The same way with Drew Barrymore saying, tell Kamala, we need a mamala. <laughs> you know, what I mean? yeah, they oh. want you to view the government as something you subservient to. Maybe oh. I'm looking into it too much. Maybe I'm too much of a nerd. But I don't think this shit is an accident. That I, the, the fact that she pulled these parent uh, metaphors, they want us to think that way. Like, yeah, the no. fact that, oh, here's your choices. The government gives you your choice. You can't go outside of it. Like, I think that's 100% on purpose. And and it shows that she and she can pay the big bucks for a reason, Nico man. Like we yeah. may we can we can we can see through all this shit, and it's very nefarious what she does. But she can pay the big bucks for a reason, man. Like, yeah, she, yeah. I tell people all the time, like you don't make that much money to tell the truth. You don't make that much yeah. money to tell the truth. Hey, you gotta yeah. you gotta be good at convincing. You only make that much money when you're really good at convincing people of lies. And yeah. sometimes you make even more if you're really bad at convincing people of lies, but it get a lot of clicks. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Look. To, look, Piers Morgan's a mass kiss. We're gonna talk about that later on once you get up off of here. But yeah, that man just invites people on just to embarrass him. I mean, he gets paid a lot of money to do it. 